Welcome to a Legendarium special about Neferu Sobek, a queen of 12th Dynasty Egypt. In this episode, we will learn about a woman who assumed supreme power at an unsettled time in Egypt's history. Ancient Egypt's first Dark Age ended with the rise of the 12th Dynasty, which moved the capital to the Fayum Basin, a rich offshoot of the Nile River south of Memphis. From 1985 to 1773 BC, this dynasty ruled over Egypt and their kings took grand titles like He of the Sedge Plant and the Bee, Master of the Two Lands, and Son of Re. They adopted the crocodile god Sobek as their patron, and Neferu Sobek's name meant Beauty of Sobek. Of the 12th dynasty kings, Amenemhat III enjoyed the longest reign, ruling over Egypt for an astonishing 45 years. He believed it his kingly duty to impregnate as many women as possible to sustain the all-important royal bloodline, a task he took to with relish. Towards the end of his reign, he sired a daughter named Neferu Sobek, who took her place in the royal harem with hundreds of other women. Such women enjoyed the greatest luxuries the richest kingdom on earth had to offer. However, they had little purpose in their lives and relieved their boredom with endless intrigues. Each competed to seduce the king and give him a son, which would be their golden ticket to favor and power. King Amenemhat III also sired Neferu Sobek's older sister Neferu Ptah, whom Amenemhat III groomed to become his daughter wife. The Twelfth Dynasty long practiced such incestuous unions to keep wealth and power within the royal family. Ancient Egyptians knew that such unions produced weak and sickly offspring, yet the Twelfth Dynasty believed the goods outweighed the dangers of bringing rival families into power. Yet, fortune changed when Neferu Sobek's elder sister Neferu Ptah died suddenly. Since no man lives forever, even one who fancies himself a god, Amenemhat III went to meet the gods not long after. His imaginatively named son and heir Amenemhat IV took the throne, with Neferu Sobek as his sister wife. Sadly, the Twelfth Dynasty's long tradition of incestuous marriages resulted in weak and short-lived family members. When Amenemhat IV died after only nine years on the throne, the absence of a male heir made Neferu Sobek the closest in line of succession. So she took royal titles and ruled ruled as a king. Other female monarchs took power during the first and sixth dynasties, so this would not have been too shocking to her subjects. To show her power, she took feminized royal titles like She of the Sedge Plant and the Bee, Mistress of the Two Lands, and Daughter of Ray. She ordered her statues to be placed in temples across Egypt, though none of them preserve her face. One depicted her wearing the same striped headcloth worn by King Tut centuries later. Like other Middle Kingdom statues, her statuary showed her with high cheekbones, a careworn face, and giant ears that heard even the slightest whisper against her. To show her power, she wore the royal kilt above her navel, just below her chest. Around her neck, she wore the same pierced heart amulet her grandfather and father wore. Neferu Sobek ruled as a full king, her statues showing her with full regalia and in traditional royal poses, with no attempt to depict her as a man, as Queen Hatshepsut of the 18th dynasty did centuries later. During her reign, Neferu Sobek worked with priests to show that she did not take power for her own sake, but to secure the legacy of her great father, which made for wonderful propaganda. To show herself a good daughter, she finished her father's vast temple complex at Hawara. She even ordered her father made a god within temple spaces. To support the Hawara temple and its priests, Neferu Sobek set aside vast estates whose grain, flax, and livestock paid priests to make offering to her dead father's cult statues. The Turin canon gives her a reign of three years, ten months, and twenty-four days. It did not prove an easy time to rule. 
as the 12th dynasty died out, the annual spring floods failed to occur. As crops failed, famine set in. She tapped the rich grain stores and opened state-controlled bins to feed hungry Egyptians. A learned woman, she read poems of suffering caused by weak government and would not allow her subjects to suffer such hardship during her time. Indeed, she had enough money left over from famine relief to begin her own funerary complex at Mazguna, close to that of her father's at Hawara. It is thought though not proven, that one of the unfinished pyramids there might have been built for her. And like much else of her reign, the circumstances of her death remain a mystery. Could intriguing courtiers have murdered her for taking power that they believed belonged to a man? Might generations of incestuous marriages have left her with poor health and thus a short life? What Whatever way she died, it is remarkable that she ruled unopposed for almost four years. Her subjects showed their gratitude for the peace she brought in an unsettled time by keeping her name in the king's list, making no effort to disguise her as a man. That wraps things up for this episode of The Legendarium. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, press like. If you want to see more, press subscribe. And if you've got anything to say, let me know in the comments section. Thanks again for joining me, and I hope that you have a great Great rest of the day.